Hi guys, in this lesson we are going to examine bone development again and specifically endochondral ossification. This method is going to be used for the vast majority of bones in your body and with the clavicle as an exception it will be used for all bones below your skull. So all bones below the skull. With intramembranous ossification I had stated that it was the primary method within the first two months of fetal development. But after that time we see endochondral ossification become the primary bone formation method. The key point that your body has achieved by this stage in fetal development is that the majority of the skeletal framework is hyaline cartilage. So this will be the blueprint that endochondral ossification will use. Now that we know those key factors that endochondral ossification needs, let's take a step-by-step -step look at what's actually happening in the process. So the first thing that we're going to see happen here is that the perichondrium is going to become vascularized. So the perichondrium is the outer layer of this uh, cartilaginous tissue in the uh, forming bone, and it's going to be penetrated by these uh, tiny blood vessels that are going to start delivering uh, nutrients to that area. So that perichondrium is vascularized. Next, what we're going to see is after that area has become uh, vascularized, those blood vessels are going to start delivering nutrients that are going to stimulate those mesenchymal cells that remain there to differentiate into osteoblasts. And we learnt previously that osteoblasts are cells that form bone or deposit osteoid. So we'll uh, just draw quickly on here that these are mesenchymal stem cells that are sitting in this uh, area are actually going to start to differentiate and uh, change and commit their form to becoming osteoblasts. Now once they've become osteoblasts, they're going to start to gather along the diaphysis wall and the diaphysis wall is just the outer edge of those long bones. Once again, we'll just draw that up here so we can get an idea of what's actually going on. So they're gathering at the diaphysis wall to form a bone collar. So these osteoblasts we can see gathering here along that wall are going to start depositing osteoid and forming a bone collar. Now we'll just uh, highlight that in there so that we can see this is bone that's starting to form around here. And it's going to go all the way around that diaphysis. We'll just point out as well that this uh, central point here that this whole process has started from is actually called the primary ossification center. So the primary ossification center is going to be our starting point for endochondral ossification. And the last thing we'll point out before we move on to our next step is that all of this our central blue area is currently hyaline cartilage. In this second phase of endochondral ossification, what we are going to see is that the formation of the bone collar will cause chondrocytes that remain within that central cavity to enlarge and send a signal to the surrounding cartilage to calcify. Now chondrocytes are just those cells that were responsible for building the initial hyaline blueprint. What this calcification is going to cause is an impermeability toward the inner portion of that developing bone. Due to the cells uh, remaining in that area no longer receiving the nutrients they need for survival. Now when those nutrients are, can no longer come in, what it's going to cause is cell death of those cells in that area. So we'll just draw that here. Nutrients are trying to go in but they can no longer diffuse through that area. Once the cells have died and that matrix begins to deteriorate, a central clearing will start to form. So I'll just draw that on here, uh, the central clearing. So we can see just in here. 
But if we think about it, when hyaline cartilage is deteriorating and a cavity is forming, how will the structure be supported? This is when we have to remember that a bone collar has already formed around the outer edge of that diaphysis. So it's supported by bone already, and we'll just show that here. While this is all occurring at that uh, primary ossification centre, there are still going to be healthy chondrocytes uh, further toward the distal ends of the bone that are still producing cartilage matrix and uh, in charge of elongating that structure, as I'll just show here. So the bone is still getting longer with the deposition of more cartilage. Now, if we move on to the next step, the first thing we are going to see is that there is a new structure appearing in the middle of the bone. This structure is called a periosteal bud, and it will be in charge of directing new bone growth from here. So I've got uh, written here that this periosteal bud will invade that cavity, and it's going to cause the formation of spongy bone. And the reason it does that is because that periosteal bud that's uh, going into that central area consists of an artery, a uh, vein, lymphatics, uh, nerves, and it's also going to deliver uh, osteogenic cells. So it consists of all those different uh, vessel types. And we'll just write that all here as well. So this is the periosteal bud is uh, developing from here. So when I say that it's going to be delivering osteogenic cells, what I mean is it's going to be delivering cells that are involved in either the uh, building or degrading of our bone tissue or bone matrix. So our osteoblasts or osteoclasts. Now clasts are in charge of degrading and uh, blasts are in charge of building. So we'll write that down here quickly and then I'll uh, show you on the illustration. So if we want to remove that cartilage matrix, but at the same time be building that new spongy bone, this is how we're going to go about it. Okay, we've got that all written up. Let's have a look at where it's actually occurring. So we've got these osteoclasts that are going to be uh, positioned where the uh, cartilage ends, and it's going to be uh, degrading that cartilage matrix tissue, so there's room for new bone to be uh, grown in there. So that one's our uh, clast cell. Now we've got these uh, osteoblasts all through this uh, central kind of cavity area now, building and depositing new spongy bone matrix. So that's uh, building and that's blast cells. The last step that we're going to notice here is that this bone is still elongating. So we have those chondrocytes still depositing new cartilage further up towards those epiphyses. So it's elongating uh, still. And we'll just draw our arrows in that direction here to show where it's being elongated. And now when we move on to the next phase, we're going to see a few more differences again. This central cavity we can see now is almost completely spongy bone. So the primary ossification center is going to continue to enlarge. Just drawing that up here quickly as well, that that primary ossification center is enlarging. Earlier on, we had the osteoclasts degrading that cartilage matrix so that new room for spongy bone could be made. But now they have another role as well. They're going to start degrading the most central portion of our spongy bone so that the early stages of the medullary cavity can be developed. And we'll show that here. So we have these osteoclasts that are degrading and breaking down this central portion of spongy bone now that were deposited earlier by the osteoblasts. Just writing here now that that's where the medullary cavity will start to be formed. The medullary cavity we know in a uh, mature long bone is going to be where we're going to store uh, fat. So we'll just show that this uh, empty area in here is the early stages of that medullary cavity that the osteoclasts are working on clearing. Now that the bone is almost at its full length within the initial ossification period, chondrocytes will only deposit new cartilage within the developing epiphyses, which are just the ends of the bone. 
So we can see on here that cartilage is only being deposited up within this area now in the epiphyses. Now that the cartilage is only forming up in those epiphyses, we're going to have those osteoblasts now uh, depositing bone at the beginning of those epiphyseal surfaces, so the start of the epiphyseal plates. Uh, just drawing that now, we've got a bony deposition here at those epiphyses. And we'll have that at both ends. The last thing you're going to see up the top here is that I've drawn in a secondary ossification center and it's going to appear at either one or both ends of the epiphyses of the developing bone. Now it's not going to start ossifying that area quite yet. That doesn't usually occur until after birth. So that's going to remain as a cartilage until after birth. So we've made it to our last step of the endochondral ossification now. And I'll just write down quickly again that those epiphyses, secondary ossification centers, were only going to appear after birth. So they'll remain hyaline cartilage until then. Just earlier as well, I also said that that secondary ossification center will appear at either one or both ends of the epiphyses. Now, it's good to point out that usually in the uh, longer or larger bones there will be two secondary ossification centers. We are never actually named the bone that we're seeing develop here but uh, for the sake of pretending it's a larger bone that's going to have two of those secondary ossification centers we'll write down that it's going to be the humerus. So we'll say this is the humerus the long bone of the upper arm, and if it was, it would have two of those secondary ossification centers, so one at the top and one here at the bottom. So just to clarify with uh, the different types of bone that we have in the body, short bones are more likely to have only one center, and your irregular shaped bones like the, the vertebrae and uh, the pelvic bones, they may have uh, several. So if we were examining the bone development after birth now, we would only see cartilage remaining on the surfaces of the bone and at the epiphyseal plates. So within those ossification centers, you are going to get a spongy bone within those epiphyses now, where we're going to store that red marrow. So we can see we have the articular cartilage uh, on the surface of the bone that is going to protect and lubricate our joints to aid in movement. Articular cartilage, we'll just write that here. And we can also see that we've got the cartilage within the epiphyses, so around here. So the top and bottom epiphyses. And they're going to play an important role in growth that we will discuss in another video. Now this is all the steps of endochondral ossification guys. Once again, I hope it was helpful and thanks for watching.